Hello there, you're watching Danski, the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a coffee clock composite in Adobe Photoshop. So let's jump into it. You can see on screen an example of what we're going to be creating here and let's just break this down. So we have some color adjustments at the top there, all in a separate folder. We have a glow along the edge. We have a vignette over the coffee as well, darkening the edges and highlighting the center a bit more. And we have the coffee itself with an inner shadow blending option applied. And of course, a couple of circles that we used as guides. And here's the original image. So this is what it's going to look like once we lay it all together. And you don't just have to do this with a clock. You can take a coffee or any kind of creatively decorated hot drink and use it with anything circular. So let's just jump over to the main tutorial document. We have the image of the clock here and separately we have the coffee. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a selection. So let's just zoom in to our clock face there, jump back to our coffee image and again we'll zoom in and we're going to left click and hold on the rectangular marquee tool and then go down to the elliptical marquee tool and this will draw a circle if you hold down shift. So we're just going to left click and hold shift and drag out to create a circle. And we're going to sample the coffee. Now to get the right size, you might need to do this a few times, but once you've made that selection, you can just shimmy this into place. Now we don't want to capture any of the white by mistake. So if you do cut into the edge of the coffee ever so slightly, don't worry, that's okay. Now, if we were to copy and paste this now, you can see it has a very hard edge. So it's not gonna blend very seamlessly with our clock. So once you've made that selection, if you go up to select and down to modify and select feather, and we're going to feather or soften the edge of this selection. Now, depending on the size of your image, you might need to try a few different feather radiuses here just to get the right amount. I'm gonna try 40 and click okay, just see how that looks. And if you want to see how it looks, just go to edit, copy, edit, paste. And it will paste that selection onto a new layer. And you can see that it's softened that edge. So I'm going to go with that for now, but feel free to play around with that feather radius amount just to get the right amount. You don't want it to be too soft, but you don't want it to be too hard either. So well, we've got this on a separate layer now, so we can right click this, select duplicate layer, and just duplicate that to our main tutorial.psd document and click OK. And we can close this one down now. And you can see it adds this layer into our document. And what we can do next is just hide this and I will just double click the layer and call it coffee. Next, I'm going to left click and hold on the rectangle tool and select the ellipse tool. And as we did before, left click and hold shift to draw a circle. And it has a solid black fill, but we can double click on the thumbnail here. And I'm just going to give this a really bright color. Now, the reason I choose bright colors is because I'm just going to be using this as a guide. So I'd like it to stand out against the image. Now this first circle here, I'm going to go to edit, free transform, and just keep that shift held so I don't lose the circular proportions and I want this to cover the entire clock face. So I'm just stretching from all four corners so it covers that clock face. And if you go over ever so slightly, that's okay. And you can either hit return or double click to set that transformation. So we've got one guide there. And what I'm going to do next, because that is central, I'm going to right click and duplicate this layer as well and give this one another really bright color. So we'll go with the yellow. Now this one's actually going to be behind and I want this one to cover the outside of the clock. So again, let's go to edit, free transform and we can hold shift to scale up, but we can also hold down alt. So let's hold down alt and shift and it will scale up from the center. Now I'm not going to hold shift while I make these adjustments here because the goal is to try and match the outside of the clock as closely as possible. And the clock may not actually be perfectly circular. So just something to watch out for. Okay. 
So that's a pretty good job there. So we've created these and we can just use those as guides. In fact, we can switch these off for now because we don't need them. And I'm just going to bring my coffee layer to the front. And let's switch this back on. And of course we can go to edit, free transform, and just hold shift and scale this up. And again, shift and alt with scaling from the center. So you can see I probably feathered that a little bit too much looking back, but that's okay. So let's just double click to set that transformation. Now we have this roughly in place. What I'm going to do next is use one of these ellipses that we created before. So we're going to be working with the inner one at the moment. That's the red one. In fact, I'm just going to name these inner and outer. When you have lots of layers in Photoshop, it's very easy to get mixed up. So I'm going to hold down command or control over the thumbnail for the inner layer and just left click. And you'll see the marching ants appear and it makes that selection. I'm next going to click on the coffee layer and then from the bottom of the layers panel, the third option in from the left, I can click layer mask and it will add a layer mask and you can see it crops it to that selection. And what I can do now is unlink these and just click back on the layer itself and again, go to edit, free transform, hold shift and alt and just scale up. Because if I bring it down, you can see that feathering because I feathered it a bit too much at the beginning, it's coming through. So I'm going to increase the size of this a little bit. And again, double click or hit return to set that transformation. And I can relink these again. So when they're linked, they move around together, the layer and the mask. If they're unlinked, the mask will stay in place and the layer will move independently. Okay, great. So we've got our coffee. Next, we're going to create a vignette. Now a vignette is something that darkens the edges of an image or a photo or a video and then leaves the center area a little bit lighter. So we can add a new layer from the bottom of the layers panel. Now we already have this mask here and we've got our inner layer as well. So we can use either of those to make a selection. So just hold down command or control and you'll see that little symbol appears next to the hand. Left click and we get that same selection with the marching ants. Now we're going to go over to our where our paint bucket tool is. Just left click and hold and you'll see the gradient tool appear. And from the top here we've got different types of gradient. We've got linear on the left, radial and loads of other crazy ones. But we're going to be using radial for this tutorial. So that's this one here. And if we click anywhere on the gradient slider, we get the entire gradient panel come up and there should be a default black to white gradient. So we can click that and click OK. And we're just going to left click in the center and drag to the outside edge and let go. And it creates a gradient. However, the gradient is the wrong way around. So let's just undo that. And we can tick this little box here, reverse. And if we drag out from the center again with the gradient tool. Okay, so that's the kind of gradient that we're going for. However, there's not enough of a rim around the edge. It's a very, very gradual gradient. And we want this to be a little bit more defined. So the edge is really dark and there's a lot more lighter space in the middle. So if we click on the gradient slider, we're just going to bring white in. Let's go for about 50% on the location here. Now again, we're going to left click in the middle, drag out to the edge and let go. And you can see now we've got a much lighter and larger area in the center and the outside is darker. And we can double click on this layer and I'm just going to call this vignette. And we can change the blending mode from normal to multiply and it will blend through onto the image. Now, of course, this is a little bit harsh. It looks a little bit unrealistic, but we can just drop that opacity down Let's go for about 40%. So this is our original image and we've just darkened that, those edges and the center is a little bit lighter. Now something else that we're going to do is right click on the coffee layer and select blending options. And let's just move this over here. And we're going to add an inner shadow. So this is going to be a shadow coming off of the clock as if it were a coffee mug and the coffee is the liquid inside it. So there would be a slight shadow coming off 
And these are the settings that I'm using here. You can adjust the angle a little bit if you want. I have to round the opacity up to 60 because 59 is, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. My OCD can't handle that. So we've got the distance. So you can have the distance here come in a little bit more, but we don't want it to be too obvious. It's a very uh, subtle shadow because the coffee is quite full. If the coffee were a lot lower in the, in the cup or the clock, um, it, the shadow would be a bit more defined. And you can make this softer or harder as you like. This is entirely up to you. But let's go for something like this and click OK. And you can see that that shadow is listed now underneath the layer as an effect. And I can turn this on and off. And let's right click this blending options again on the coffee layer. And I'm going to try Oh no, it's already set to multiply. Okay, so there we go. We have our inner shadow added. Let's have a look and see what else we've got. Okay, so now we're going to add a glow around the edge. If you look at the top part of the clock, you can see there's a highlight around the edge and it's white. Now this might be natural light, studio light, or just the light white background that we've got that's creating that white highlight. You can see it here on the top of the clock as well. However, down here we have another highlight, but this is on the inside edge. Now, in reality, you would most likely get some of the kind of orange hues or brown or whatever color the coffee is, these kind of color tones reflecting onto this highlight. So we want to adjust that down the bottom. At the moment, there's a little bit of a disconnect between this color and then this bright white highlight. So let's make that a little bit more believable. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the bottom of the layers panel, select hue and saturation adjustment layer. No, we're not. No, we're not. We're going to select photo filter. You can do this with the hue and saturation adjustment. There's lots of different ways, but photo filter is probably the easiest. And we've just selected a warming filter, or you can click here on the color picker and pick a color so you could sample the same color from the coffee. But if we just increase that density, even something like this. Let's go for about 70%. And we can toggle this on and off with the eye at the bottom. Maybe just drop that down a little bit. And then what we can do is we can fill, using our paint bucket tool, fill our photo filter layer mask with black. So it completely hides that effect. Select white as the foreground color and pick one of Photoshop's default feathered brushes. And then we're just going to paint into that mask. So you'll notice that I've got the mask selected here for the adjustment layer. And we're just painting back in that photo filter just for this one area. We don't want to paint out here, as you can see. So it's just isolated to that area. And we'll just go up here. And then you could double click that layer and we'll just call this edge glow. So if I turn this off and back on, you can see it's very subtle. And of course you can adjust the properties for that photo filter or the opacity or the blending mode. So lots and lots of flexibility there. Okay, so for the most part, we've completed our coffee clock. What we're going to do is just make a few more final adjustments. So we're going to add some more adjustment layers. We're going to add a vibrance one. And we're just going to increase the vibrance here. So you can see that this is very subtle. But the thing with adjustment layers is, even though they might be subtle changes, when you combine several subtle adjustment layers, they can have a big impact on the end result. So we've got a vibrance adjustment layer. And we're going to do a curves one as well. And you can play around with the curves graph here and get all sorts of wild and wacky effects. But you've also got presets at the top. So let's go for linear contrast. Uh, let's try medium contrast. I think we'll go for medium contrast and I'm just going to drop that opacity down just so it's not as harsh. So we can toggle this off and back on. And I'm just going to add one more, which is another photo filter layer. And I'm going to apply this at the very top. So this layer needs to be on the top because then it will apply that warming filter to the whole image, the coffee, the clock, the background, so it all kind of fits together a bit more. 
previously if I just turn this off the background is all very very cold the coffee is very warm and I just want this to all kind of link together a bit better so this can be really subtle but I'm going to group all of my adjustment layers together by just holding shift and left clicking and then pressing command or control G or clicking the folder from the bottom of the layers panel and I'm going to call this adjustments and I can toggle this on and off and you'll see what a difference this makes now so you can see that was the original image and that is the slightly enhanced image so we've adjusted the vibrance the curves and we've added that photo filter and all of this is still fully editable so you can go back in and adjust it fine-tune it until you get something that you're happy with and I've just realized that we created this outer one and we didn't actually use it this was just another way to make a selection for that bottom edge but I think when I was rehearsing this tutorial actually doing it as a photo filter was a lot easier and there we go that's how to create a coffee clock composite in Adobe Photoshop as always guys please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below like this video if you enjoyed it take care and I'll see you next time